Haiti's Prime Minister, Ariel Henry, has formally resigned and a new provisional government has been sworn in during a secret ceremony at the presidential palace, nearly two months after a criminal insurrection plunged the capital into chaos. The nine-person a transitional council was officially established on Thursday during an event at the National Palace in Port-au-Prince. As its members took their oaths, Henry, who was in the U.S. having been locked out of Haiti by the gang uprising, announced in a letter that he was stepping down. We have served the nation during difficult times, wrote Henry, a neurosurgeon turned politician who came to power after the assassination of President Jovenel Moise in 2021. Henry had announced last month that he was quitting. Thursday's early morning ceremony was cloaked in secrecy and was not publicly announced because of the threat of violence. On the eve of the event, reports suggested it would take place in another government property, a mansion on the outskirts of town. In recent days, there have been shootouts between police and armed criminals in the downtown area around the palace. A prominent gang spokesperson, Jimmy Cherizier, this week warned Haiti's incoming caretaker leaders to brace yourselves. Despite that threat, the U.S. and 15-member Caribbean community, CARICOM, backed council pressed on with its inauguration on Thursday, almost two months after the start of the criminal rebellion on February 29th. Since the coordinated attacks began, Port-au-Prince has in effect been cut off from the outside world, with its international airport and port closed because of gunfights, and the roads linking it to other cities commandeered by armed groups notorious for kidnapping and extortion. Only those wealthy enough to pay thousands of dollars for private helicopter flights, or desperate enough to brave the highways, have been able to get in or out of the capital. Foreign governments have evacuated hundreds of citizens to the U.S. or the neighboring Dominican Republic, which shares the island of Hispaniola with Haiti. An official photograph of Thursday's ceremony hinted at the strife. The council's suited members, eight men and a woman, stood on a dais decorated in the country's red and blue national colors with a police officer wearing a ballistic helmet to their left. As the councillors, who represent Haiti's main political parties as well as civil society and faith groups, took their oaths, a military band announced the new leadership with trumpets, tubas, and trombones. Political activists greeted the creation of the council optimistically. Its first task will be to choose a new prime minister before paving the way for elections. At a second ceremony marking the establishment of the council, the recently appointed U.S. ambassador to Haiti, Dennis Hankins, said he hoped his country could help Haiti return to a path of stability, democracy, and economic growth. Each day is a new day, and this is a new day for Haiti, Hankins said. The parties representing really the entire range of Haitian society have shown their ability to go past their personal or party interests to work together in favor of the Haitian people. So it is an important step today. In crisis, the Haitians are able to do tremendous things, and we're here to help them. We won't be the solution, but hopefully we'll be part of helping those finding the solution. Hankins recognized that the U.S. was partly responsible for Haiti's current drama, given the large number of weapons flowing into the hands of Haiti's gangs from the U.S. The fact that many of the arms that come here come from the United States, I think, is indisputable, and that has a direct impact here, admitted the ambassador, who said he believed his government was now working to limit the export of such firearms. Haiti, which is still recovering from a devastating 2010 earthquake that leveled the capital and killed tens of thousands of people, has no elected officials and has not held an election since 2016. Armed groups are said to control at least 80% of the capital, with outgunned police fighting to keep the politically connected gangs at bay. More than 50,000 people have been displaced by the violence, with at least 2,500 people killed or injured since the start of the year and 1.6 million people on the brink of famine. Follow. Haiti's Prime Minister Ariel Henry announced his resignation on Thursday, handing power over to a transitional council that will seek to gain control of the violence-ravaged nation. Henry wrote in his resignation letter dated Wednesday that, given the current state of affairs, the time was right for him to step down. We have served the nation in difficult times. I thank everyone who had the courage to face such challenges with me, he said. Haiti has been overrun by chaos and gang violence in recent weeks, with criminal groups attacking government structures and social order on the brink of collapse. The Caribbean nation's finance minister Michael Patrick Boisver has been appointed as interim prime minister until a new government is formed, according to an ex-post from Henry's office on Thursday. Haiti, our country, is at a crossroads in the search for solutions to overcome this multidimensional political crisis, 
that has lasted for so long, and the consequences of which are detrimental to the population, to property, and both public and private infrastructures," Boisver said at the swearing-in ceremony at the Prime Minister's office, Villa Diacuil. A transitional council, composed of seven voting members and two non-voting observers, has been tasked with the responsibility of naming a new prime minister and cabinet. The committee will exercise certain presidential powers until a new president-elect is inaugurated, which must take place no later than February 7, 2026. Henry announced in March his plans to step down once a decision on the country's future leadership was made, and the transitional council was set up soon after. The Caribbean Community and Common Market Caricom, welcomed the council's formation in a statement earlier this month, hoping it would mark a new beginning for Haiti. The United Nations Secretary General spokesperson Stefan de Jarek also welcomed the news and called for the swift deployment of a multinational security mission to support Haiti's police. Related article hunger in Haiti is spreading amid gang violence, aid workers warned since February, Attacks by an insurgent alliance of gangs in the capital Port-au-Prince mean the city's international airport and seaport have ceased to function, breaking vital supply lines of food and aid and triggering an exodus of evacuation flights for foreign nationals. With the city virtually cut off from the outside world, hospitals have been vandalized while warehouses and containers storing food and essential supplies have been broken into as the social fabric frays. According to the UN, nearly 5 million people in Haiti are suffering from acute food insecurity, defined as when a person's inability to consume adequate food poses immediate danger to their lives or livelihoods. This is the worst humanitarian crisis in Haiti since the 2010 earthquake. I don't think that's sunk in, Jean Martin Bauer, the World Food Program's country director for Haiti, told CNN last month. The U.